Welcome to the Blender Survival Guide, episode 13. My name is Paolo Ciccone, and with this video, we are going to conclude this three part tutorial on how to create volumetric light using the amazing Lux Renderer. In the previous video, we started our scene and we shined some light through openings in the window. And the last thing we did was to change the material for the monkey head to a certain type of glass. But the scene does look a little muddy, a little too dark. So let's stop it for now and uh, see another aspect of Lux. Well, in real life, lights are not an infinitesimally small point that generates light in some sort of a cone or direction, but they are actually physical objects, like there is a light bulb with a filament, and the surface of that filament generates light. Well, Lux is actually made to reproduce that kind of reality. And so when I light a scene in real life, I generally use something like um, you know, a fill light of some sort, either a bounce or um, a softbox. And we know that the larger the softbox surface is, the softer the light is. So let's reproduce that situation in here. And what I can do here is to basically right-click where the camera is, snap the cursor to it, so Shift-S, and then cursor to selection. So now I have the cursor right here. It's just a convenience to identify a point. And then I press Shift-A to create a new plane. Okay. And um, I can take this plane, move it, Let's switch to side view, and I'm going to rotate it a little bit. And I'm going to make this plane a little smaller. You don't need that large in this situation. Okay. And I'm going to give a, a material to this plane. And I'm going to call it softbox. The name of the material is totally up to you. This is just a, an easy way for me to remember. Now, at this point, I changed things enough that it's better if I save my scene. So let's go to File, Save As, and we're going to go to Episode 12, and we are going to call this BSG12, and avoid a potential catastrophe. Okay, now that we are safe, and I have my softbox material, I'm going to switch to Lux, which already recognized the material. And in the material type, I'm going to drop down the list and change this to a light. I'm not going to change anything of this except one thing. You can group lights together in Lux. So you can basically put multiple spotlights if you want and call them spots, which is what I'm going to do right now. I'm going to change the group from default to spots even though I have only one. You never know. Plan ahead. So now I'm going to right-click on this and change that to be soft box. Okay? And we'll see in a minute why that is important. So let's, let's do a test render. Actually, hold on. Before I do a test render, this is a soft box. I just need it for a fill. I don't want to light the entire scene with that light. I want to just add a little more to it. So I don't need, you know, 100 watts of power. I can probably go to, I don't know, 40 watts. Okay. So now that we have everything, let's save it again. Let's render and see what happens. And first pass is done. Okay, I think I can see a little bit of light from here, but it's not really what I want to do. I want light to come from here. And we are going to change that material back to metal because at least for the test renders, it takes a long, long time. And that's okay because, in fact, glass takes a much longer computation to 
be rendered. So let's close this for a second. And uh, I'm going to change the position of this. Light from here. And I'm going to rotate it. Let me see. Okay, rotate it. There you go. And of course, let's switch the manipulator of this to be local so we can move it in the right direction and uh, like this it's uh, off screen let me move this a little bit again and the camera okay so we have more room for adjustment here all right and switch back to metal i still remember it's aluminum so it's good it's all good let's try again and uh, see the render Ooh, i like it i like it i like it. i like it that is looking good already there's double fill there is the light coming from the openings the highlights are there so very nice Okay, so let's see how we can turn this into some sort of volumetric light. Volumetric light, or, you know, basically is created by having fog. You know, in a real set, if you want to create that kind of effect, you'll have somebody fog in the set and then shining lights through narrow openings so that you can have that kind of beam. And the beam will be visualized by the fog. The level of fog depends on the scene. So you can create something similar in Lux by simply creating a volume, like a box in this case, and assigning to that box a material of the right kind. That basically will tell Lux to fill the box with fog. So what in our case, we are going to create a box that encloses the entire set. So I'm going to right click on the walls, as I just did, press Shift S, and snap the cursor to the selection, and then create another cube. And this is our cube. We're going to resize it so it's slightly larger. I'm going to switch to wireframe representation so that I can see it. Now, in uh, these kind of operations, stay very conservative. Make the volume smaller, as small as possible, so that the computation will be faster. We don't need all this room below, so we're going to just resize it. S, Z, and lower it. Okay. And move it up a little bit. Let's see. Okay, and now we have this enclosing box. I'm going to give it a material. Add new, let's call it fog. The fog. And we are going to go back here to our Lux Blend, and in here we are going to change the material to bound volume. That is geek speak for fog, bound volume. Okay. And here we have some different types of fog. It can be homogeneous, exponential, and cloud. Forget about it. Let's keep homogeneous. And here are the parameters that we want to use. We are going to have an absorption of about 0.2 on each RGB channel and a scattering of 0.4 again on all channels. How did I get to these values? Endless tests. So I'm just saving you hours and hours of trial and error. Use these values, they will be okay. At least as a start. Then go ahead and, and spend hours and hours in trial and error. Now there is one more thing that we need to change. And again, you know, just take this at face value for now. Make your life a little simpler. Click on the Render tab and uh, 
in the integrator, we're not going to even look at what that means. In the integrator, switch from bidirectional to path. Leave the defaults, okay? And everything else should be just fine. Let's see. Render. And this is going to slow down your render incredibly. But if done right, I, can I think I can see just some hint of a beam right here. Ooh, it looks even better. I definitely see some beams there. Holy fog, Batman. We have volumetric light. And I'll fast forward to a point where we can actually see something more defined. Okay, so here is uh, the scene after a, a few passes. And now let me just show you one thing of Lux that is interesting. Remember those light groups that we created? The spots and um, I think softbox. So here in the UI, you can click on this tab called light groups. And now we can see the same two spots and softbox groups that we created. Now, here is a part that is tricky. You can change the gain of the lights while the image is rendering. Now, isn't that amazing? <laughs> so after you decide what lights you want and how intense they are, you can change their intensity, shifting the balance of the scene where the rays are more or less relevant and visible. And the fill is none, or a little more, and a little more, and a little more, until you feel that it is just right. And this is amazing. This is truly an amazing feature. Look at the gain for the beams. You can change the dramatic effect of each light or each group of lights, actually, independently. All right, so the scene is now finished. It's still a little muddy and needs to be rendered for a little longer, but I think you got the concept. And um, we can play, we can move around, we can add more lights, we can add sources of lights. Uh, shining through more openings and creating all kinds of effects. We can change the material again. Um, if you look in the Lux interface, you'll see we have car paint, for example. Car paint simulates all the effects of a clear coat on top of the classic material used for painting cars and um, many, many, many others. Um, there is plenty of documentation of the Lux Render website, but this is introducing again to recap a couple of important concepts. We don't have to rely on Blender's built-in render engine, and um, we have another alternative that is physically based and it's open source. It runs on all the major operating systems. Use it, waste some hours away. This is a great fun and Again, can be used for creating incredibly realistic images. As always, I hope this was helpful. My name is Paolo Ciccone. I'll see you next time.